and we're live. All right. Hello, everyone, and happy Monday on this gloomy, rainy day here in LA. My name is Larissa Love, Joyful Global Brand Ambassador and Artistic Director. And today, what I'm going to be teaching you is something that you can utilize behind the chair right away, something that almost every client wants. And it's going to be all about the hairline today, how to get that perfect blended hairline, dimensional hairline, how to not have any black holes, how to go about having lots of baby hairs or receding hairline. So I'm going to be showing you all the tricks in the trade and just all my tips and tricks today. So let's get started. All right. So before I do any of lightning color on any of my clients, doll heads, what I'm going to be doing is prepping her with Joy Good to Buy Damage Pro 1. So if you guys don't know anything about this product, you definitely should because it is the OG product. This is the hero product to make your hair super strong. It is our bond builder like no other. It's going to make the hair five times stronger, reduce 80% less breakage, maintain 90% more color vibrancy, and my favorite, give you more greater and even results. And it's so easy to use. All you do is start in the back and take about, I don't know, two, three inch subsections and about three inches away from the hair, you're gonna be spraying in short first, okay? So, and then you're gonna comb through for even distribution. And then once you get to the front, you're gonna wanna take diagonal forward sections and then spray away from the face. So that way we are not having fumes on our clients, okay? This is in salon only, and it comes also with the Five Damage Pro 2. And they come together, and again, in salon only, you can let your client know that they can take the home care system with them as well. But this is where you're gonna put this in the hair, the Pro 2, after you wash out the client. And I like to leave this in the client's hair for at least five to 20 minutes. It really depends on the timing. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and comb through for even distribution. And you can automatically see that shine in the, in the doll head's hair. Look how gorgeous and shiny that is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And we're gonna be really focusing on zone one. For anyone that has taken my class before, you know that I like to teach uh, with my zone so that way you guys have an understanding of where I am on the placement of the head at all times. If you haven't, well, we're gonna be learning something new today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna section her out down the middle. All right, and we're gonna take about a one, two to two inches, depending on the client's density, um, towards the back of the hair at the top center and then do a diagonal back section Okay, also just so you guys know I went ahead and cut a little bit of her hair around the receding line And then just kind of gave her some baby hairs around here I wanted it, this to be very realistic for the everyday client because everyone has baby hairs Everyone has some type of receding right no one has a perfect hairline and if you do God bless you You are very lucky so I want to show you guys that something that's very realistic that you can utilize behind the chair and how to go about these issues that we always come across in the salon. All right, so we're going to go ahead and section this out, zone one, and then we're going to take my comb, put it at the top of the section, and do and pivot a little bit. And wherever it pivots is where we're going to take it from ear to ear. The reason why we're going to be pivoting is because with any other technique, so today we're not going to be covering any of the blonding up here, but if you were, and for example, if you're doing a partial, which is I call a pick me up, you're gonna wanna have a few of these highlights go back all the way up here. So when it falls back, it's gonna look like she's wearing, she has a full head of highlights, right? You do not wanna just start at and pivot it right here at the top because you're gonna really see that contrast between the two brightening sections and then the depth and dimensional sections, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and section this out with my hair twigs. And then we're gonna to go towards, or actually we'll go ahead and do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Even though today we're gonna to be working only on one side because what I do on one side, I would be doing the exact opposite. So there's no point of me repeating myself today. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and section this out as well. All right, and now we're gonna move on to the back. And we're going to go straight to zone four. So remember, guys, this was zone one. Ooh, this was zone one. This is zone two. And we're going to go to straight to zone four. 
and we're gonna take about two inches diagonal back towards the center and exact same thing on the opposite side. And then now we have zone three that we also sectioned out. And then we're gonna be splitting zone four in, the, in half. We'll be using the smaller hair twig. And you guys can get these hair twigs on larissalove.com if you wanted to. I love to section out with them because one, they look cool. Two, you can save a lot of time not having to go clip back and forth when you're highlighting. You can just wrap it around the hair twig. All right, so again, for those of you that are just signing in, I'm gonna be showcasing my hairline technique and we're gonna go about how to cover black holes, how to go about baby hairs, and how to just get the most beautiful, soft, blended, dimensional um, face framing for you in the most easiest, simple way, okay? We section out my doll head in four zones. So we have zone one, zone two, zone three, and zone four. And again, this is not the wrong way or the right way, this is my way. So I never ask my client, how do you part your hair? For me, it does not matter. For me, it, what is the most important is having balance. Balance in the color, balance in the haircut, okay? So my client, no matter how she parts her hair, will be able to have a beautiful balanced color with brightening, with depth, dimension, all of that, no matter how she wears it. So this is why she's parted down the center at all times. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Time for that fun stuff. And if you guys have any questions afterwards, you are more than welcome to slip in my DMs on my Instagram, Larissa Doll, and I will try to get back to you um, as soon as I possibly can. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start blonding her. And we are gonna be using Blonde Life Powder Lightener. Um, it is an incredible, can't talk. Incredible lightener. Gives you nine plus levels of lift. Um, it's extremely gentle to the hair because it has exotic oils. So it's going to keep the hair nice and moist as it still keeps lifting the hair. All right. And we're going to go ahead and do a full scoop of that. And normally when I am in the salon every day working on an everyday client, if I'm doing a full, for example, I start with volume five, you guys. So everything will lift slow and steady, right? I don't like to start a high developer because if I'm doing a full, it's gonna take me time to do so. I don't wanna feel rushed for the end of the technique that I'm doing. I'd rather wait and have everything lift slow and steady, right? And I'm gonna be using volume five, Luma Shine. This is what goes together by Joyka, of course. And I always start in the front as well. Why do I start in the front? Because where is hair most, um, what's the word? Um, compromised. compromised. Where's the hair most compromised? In the front. Whether it's a virgin or not, what you see, what you pay most attention to is what you're gonna really compromise, right? You're gonna touch it more, you're gonna add more heat to it. So even if it's virgin, it's still gonna be a little bit more compromised in the front. I'd rather start in the front with the low developer and work my way up to the back with the highest developer where it's untouched and unseen the most, where it's gonna be most likely the healthiest, all right? So again, that's why I start in the front and we're gonna be using Volume 5 with Joyco Blonde Life, um, Joyco Blonde Life Powder Lightener, okay? One-to-one -one ratio. And for me, it's all about consistency. I don't tend to measure my lightener because for me, it's about consistency. Um, but if you really want to go by the books, by the book, it is one to one ratio, okay? It's all about a Greek yoga consistency for me. And you're going to want to stir it up slow and steady. Really make sure that you get everything stirred up very nice and well for the product to work correctly, okay? And this is also the hero product of lighteners for me. When it comes to Joyful's lighteners, I love this lightener. I use it almost every single day, if not every single day in the salon, because it just gives you such amazing lift and it makes the hair so strong and so healthy and gives you again up to nine plus levels of lift. All right. All right, 
so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And again, I like to start in the front. And for those of you that are tuning in, I did cut her hair a little bit around where it normally would be receding, which is up here, which everyone has re recession up here, and then some baby hairs, okay? Just to make it a little bit more realistic for you guys, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and I'm gonna section this out kind of right where the eyebrow arches and wrap it around. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the side front area. Reason why I start on the side, on the bottom first, is because I learn from my own mistakes, right? So before I used to start at the top of the Mohawk section, right here, but then it would be really hard and difficult for me to actually um, get close with my foil to the hairline. So now I start from the bottom side, and then work my way up to the mohawk section. All right, so there's a fine line in between of when you have baby hairs, or there's too much baby hairs, you wanna grab some, right? Because you don't wanna create any dark folds, but then you don't wanna grab too much because you don't want it to look like breakage. There's like a fine in between. So what works for me in the salon, and again, this is why I cut it up for you guys so you guys can see. What works for me is kind of having that happy medium. So what I would do is I would grab exactly the amount of baby lights like I normally would with my baby hairs, everything included. And then I'll take my rat tail comb and then I will go the opposite direction. Can you see? I'll go the opposite direction and go against the grain of the hair. You guys can see how some of those shorter pieces are coming off and they're just going to just come off on their own and let them be. But the longer baby hairs is what I'm going to keep and lighten. Okay. So it's that fine line of in between of grabbing some, but also letting some go. All right, so you guys see we let some go, and now we're gonna be doing our baby lights. And again, we're starting off with Joico Blonde Life Powder Lightener, volume five. And I work my way up by five increments. So what I mean by that is once I'm done with my scoop, I'm gonna move up to volume 10. Once I'm done with volume 10, I'm gonna move up to volume 15. How do you make 15? You, it's half and half of 10 and 20, right? Then I'm gonna move up to 20 and 25. How do I make 25? It's half and half of 20 and 30. That way everything lives slow and steady and evenly, and I don't have to feel like I am worried about my timing, because one, I started off with a very low volume, but two, I'm working my way up by five increments. So I know that it's gonna lift slow and steady and I can even go and work on another client because I do love to double book in between and everything is gonna be chef's kiss perfect, okay? All right, now we're gonna be moving on again to the side and this is really up to you of whether you want it to be really bold in the front, a lot of brightening or you want it to be more soft. Right now, what I'm seeing is very soft and blended, very Haley Bieber vibes, right? Just the thick money piece, that's kind of going away, and we're going more for just like extremely soft, low maintenance, like you just been kissed by the sun vibes. So today, instead of me doing a slice, which is what you can do if you want to go for that bold boldness, I'm going to do another regular highlight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be start pivoting. So right here we did a baby light, and then I'm going to pivot, I'm going to pivot, right? Pivoting, one, covers more ground, but two, the more you pivot, the more softer it's going to lay. Why? Because it's going with the shape of the head, right? So we're taking basically a diagonal back section, all right? And we're going to go ahead and take regular lights. Hair is so soft. Okay, we're gonna take regular lights, but up to you again. You could take a slice if you wanted, right? Which would be a thinner section than this. If you were doing a slice, you can do a bold light. Yeah. Bold light meaning, it's just a fancy word that I like to call chunky highlights, right? Or you can do regular light, which is a regular highlight. We're gonna do a regular highlight because again, I'm going for more of that softer look. And now we're gonna go ahead and tease this one time. Now, for those of you that have ever seen my class or taken any of my classes live or in person, you know how much I love to tease. Teasing the hair will create a really soft blur 
and blend to the hair, right? And it's really about how much you tease. So the more you tease, the higher the color or the depth will be, you'll have, right? Because what goes up must come down. So all that depth that you're bringing up when you're teasing is gonna come down. So the less you tease, then you're gonna have more brightness and less dimension and depth, right? And also, we'll talk about teasing a little bit in a second on our next section, but I go ahead and tease her one time. Why? Because I want there to still be a lot of brightness and the main focal point of brightness is gonna be in the front, right? So we teased her one time, but as we are gonna be moving back, so now we're gonna be taking, see another diagonal back section. We're pivoting, right? So now we're gonna pivot, take a diagonal back section. This is gonna act as an overlay of a shadow. So it's gonna create a nice, beautiful overlay, more depth and dimension. And we're gonna go ahead and take another regular light. But now we're gonna tease twice. Why are we gonna tease twice? Because what goes up must come down, right? We want to create a shadow effect as we fall towards the back of the hair, right? Whenever like we're toning, we're creating a shadow effect. But we're gonna do the same thing with our teasing without having to rely on a shadow root. So now we're gonna go ahead and tease twice because the more you tease, the lower the shadow root, that depth is gonna fall right? Also, how you tease is a very important effect as well. If you want to have more of a rooty look, you're going to be teasing more towards closer to the root, right? If you want to have more of like a natural teardrop effect, like what we would do like three inches, right? You're going to start more in the middle of the section and tease. If you want to create a lot of depth, a lot of dimension, um, bring that low light up so that way you can fall with your tease and have that highlight low light effect, you can start very close to the end of the hair and pull all that depth and dimension up because once you comb it out, you're going to have that depth, that highlight low light effect much more. All right. So we're going for, especially around zone one, around the face. We don't want too much depth, right? Because we still want to have brightness. So we went ahead and teased her two times. And you guys see, I apply a lot of products on her foil on her uh, on a foil because we want to make sure that everything is saturated all right so no matter um whether how close i'm getting to the root area i'm always going to leave a little bit of room here so i can go against the grain of the hair and blur it out by going against the grain of that hair with my lightener so you want to leave enough room otherwise if you don't leave room then you can actually touch the lightener with on the teased area and you do not want to do that because then you're going to create a color correction for yourself basically so make sure that you do not apply lightener on that teased area so three foils guys on the side covers so much ground right we did the baby light around the hairline as close as possible then we pivoted and we did a diagonal back Regular light, teased at once. And now the last one was another pivot, diagonal back, and regular light, it teased that twice. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to the front area. Now this is gonna be your main focal point of brightness. <clears throat> okay, which is gonna always be here at the top. So my rule of thumb is, is whatever I do on the side, I do one extra. Right? So if, for example, if I did a bold light, or sorry, if I did like a slice on the side, I would do two slices at the top. We want the main focal point of brightness always to be up here and then falling into your brightness on the side, but not so bright, more scattered. Do you know what I'm saying? So for example, today we only did regular uh, highlights on her on the side, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna do three regular highlights here instead of just two on the side, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and follow this hairline. And again, I taking a baby light. Actually, now that I like, sometimes I just don't even notice what I'm doing until I do it. When I am actually working around the hairline, I actually take a very thin slice. So thin, so micro, that it actually looks like a baby light. Again, she has the most perfect hairline. That's why I cut it up a little bit so we can be a little bit more realistic. Um, but 
I basically take a very thin slice, all right? So again, everyone, almost everyone, you guys, like I, I have it too, has that recession line, right? So what do you do when it comes to that, right? You want to brighten it up because if you leave it dark right here, that pocket of black hole, then it's going to be very noticeable. So you want to add that brightness, but you also don't want it to look like it's breakage. So again, I took a thin slice, basically a baby light. I go against the grain of the hair. You guys see how we have those shorter pieces that fall out, but we do have these longer pieces that are here, right? So we're going to take those with us because they're long enough. So hold it close and tight, lots of tension, go against the grain of the hair, cut, have all those shorter pieces fall out, and then we're going to lighten the longer baby hairs on the side, right? And this is, again, part of that recession area. You want to get as close as possible to the root. And you guys see how I'm keeping that tension, okay? I want to make sure that I get as close as possible, keeping that tension to saturate. So whenever I'm saturating, I'm going with the grain of the hair. And then whenever I want to blend, I go against the grain of the hair. Again, even when I'm at the hairline, I still leave a little bit of room so I can go against the grain of that hair to blur it out. See, we can already tell how beautiful and blended this is gonna be. And don't worry, you guys, because you guys will get a full photo of the finished look and result. But this is like my go-to for the front hairline of how I like to go about for that face framing for the client. Depending on the client's density is depending on how I decide on either I wanna do a slice, whether I wanna do a bold light, a chunky highlight, or whether I wanna do a regular light. For example, for my hair, I have like two strands. My hair is very fine. So I, if I did one slice, it would look like a huge chunk of my hair, right? So we just have in my hair just regular highlights, but back to back here. So it gives that face framing, that blending, but it doesn't look overly chunky, right? So again, now going back to our pivot, we're gonna be pivoting. You see how I do a slight pivot? And with my pivot, I am gonna be pivoting, but the main uh, focal area of where I'm always gonna be pivoting and going back to is right here at the top front middle area. I'm gonna be pivoting, 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 but I'm gonna keep baby lighting or taking a highlight right here. So we have that brightness, that money piece, that hero piece, as I like to call it, right here in the top center, all right? And again, this is up to you guys whether you want to do a slice where actually, now that I think about it, I'm gonna go ahead, instead of doing a regular light, I'm gonna do a bold light. So that way we don't have to do three baby lights up here. Remember, we won't need to add that extra for whatever we did on the side. So I'm actually gonna do a bold light and that's gonna be my extra brightening instead of adding one extra foil. And we're gonna go ahead and tease that one time. Make sure you tease that all the way to the root. And of course, I have to use my beautiful Pride foils. Happy Pride, everyone. Um, I actually went to the Pride Parade yesterday in West Hollywood. And, you know, it's just so magical. Love is love. And yesterday was a beautiful day in WeHo. But happy Pride Month to all my beautiful humans. Uh-oh. All right. Again, tension is key, especially if you don't have an assistant to hold your foils. You want to make sure that you're holding that tension with the hair and the foil so that it doesn't slip. I'm using Fremar foils and also from our brush. But what I love about these foils that has an embossed texture, the minute that you apply any product on it, it is not gonna slip. The embossed texture is gonna really hold that hair on the foil, okay? But before you do so, keep that tension with the hair. All right, and again, you guys see how I'm leaving a little bit of room to go against that grain of the hair to blur it out. This is very important. You never wanna go in and just leave it right there with that demarcation line. You always wanna go against the grain of the hair to blur it out and give it that extra blend. So having the blend times two with the tease and the um, blurring against the grain of the hair is gonna just, it's gonna leave you room for success to have a beautiful blend. All right, so normally 
like I was saying, when I go up, I go up by five increments. And it's not about the zones, right? Because some zones are bigger than others or smaller than others. So I, when I go up, I go up by my scoops. So right now I am done with my scoop. So now I'm gonna do another scoop. And again, for those of you that are tuning in, I'm using Joico Blonde Life Powder Lightener. It gives you um, <clears throat> nine plus levels of lift. It's extremely gentle to the hair. It has exotic oils. So it keeps the hair nice and moist as it's lifting. And it's one to one ratio. As you guys can see, I am not um, feeling it because for me, it's all about the consistency. But if you really want to be by the book, it is one to one ratio. I like to have a nice Greek yogurt consistency, not too liquidy, not too thick, just the perfect ratio amount like you guys see right here. Make sure that you mix it up really well for it to do its job, to, for it to work exactly how it's supposed to. And we prepped her with Joyco Defy Damage Pro One. It's a bond builder like no other, gives you five times uh, makes your hair five times stronger, reduces 80% less breakage, and maintains 90% more color vibrancy. All right, and we are today focusing more on the front placement and just giving you that hero piece, that money piece, super blended, super soft, um, really going with what is in right now, but <clears throat> you can also remake it into your own version, really depending on what your client wants and what type of client your, your um, what type of hair your client has. All right, so what we did was we did a baby light, then we did a bold light. Why did we do that? Again, going back to, we always want the main focal point of brightness to be up here at the top, and then working our way down to a scattered brightness on the bottom, right? Still bright, but main focal point is gonna be up here. So what we did was we did a baby light and then two regular highlights, back to back, pivoting. So we wanna add something extra. So instead of me adding an extra foil, what I did was I added a bold light, okay? I added a bold light for that extra brightening. So we did baby light, bold light, and now we're gonna pivot. Let me show you guys. We're gonna be pivoting, taking a diagonal back section, and you guys see how I'm taking this? So everything was gonna be connecting when I'm pivoting, and this is gonna be my main focal point of brightness right here in the mid-center. And now I'm taking a regular highlight. We teased the bold light one time, so now we're gonna be teasing one extra time. We're gonna be teasing twice. Why are we doing that? Because what comes up, what goes up must come down. So the more we tease, the more depth and dimension we're gonna have, right? We're creating that shadow root effect without having to rely on a shadow root. We want it to be super nice and blended without having to rely on a toner because sometimes clients don't come back on time, right? And toner, we know, lasts anywhere from six to eight weeks depending on how often they wash their hair, what they use to wash their hair, how hot the water is, etc. But what I want to last is the placement and it will if you do it correctly, right? So teasing is gonna be your best friend for that beautiful blur blend effect. We're applying a lot of product on the hair, making sure that everything is fully saturated. And again, once we're getting close to that root area, we're gonna leave a little bit of room to go against the grain of the hair. People ask me, how do you comb out the teased hair? Some clients, for those ones that have really long or fine hair, it can be a little bit more difficult combing out their teased. And it should not be difficult to have the right products and tools. So what I do is once we wash them out, <clears throat> I wash them out, I do a super light shampoo, and then I condition. And I condition with a very moisturizing product. For example, Joico Moisture Recovery is incredible. It's for thick, thicker hair or coarser hair, but it's very, very rich and um, will really allow the hair to be combed out much more easier. So then I apply Pro 2 on there as well, and I let that live in the hair for anywhere from five to 20 minutes, depending on the tease. And I put it on the teased hair on the tease area. Let that live there and then I'll get a wet brush and I'll go ahead and start combing out from the bottom to the top. And a tip is to always comb out the way that you actually sectioned it, right? So if you're sectioning forward, start combing out the exact same way that you actually did your foiling, right? And it should be very easy. You have to prep the hair, you have to soften up that hair and Pro 2 and Moisture Recovery are like my go-to products from Joico to make sure that everything is combed out perfectly. All right, last one. This section, you can either, again, depending on what your client wants and what you want, you can either leave this as a veil, so it's gonna be almost like hidden and when she wears her hair out, 
up like this, you're gonna be able to see it, but then there's gonna be more shadow here, which I'm really into. Or you can brighten this up as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and leave this because I'm really into just more like hidden, soft, blurred, blended um, face framing right now. But if you wanted to more brightness, you can go ahead and actually line this up as well. Just make sure, again, that you're taking a diagonal back section. So we're still gonna leave a little bit of that halo to be able to cover and then highlight. And again, see how we're taking this piece right here? So it's all gonna be connecting. This is all gonna be the main focal point of brightness, but still really blended because we will be teasing three times, right? But I think I wanna just leave it so we have more of that shadow Hailing, haloing, haloing. I'm like, I know it's a word, haloing over it. All right, now we are very focusing on the front, right? But it is so important, you guys, and I cannot preach this enough. You gotta do the back. The front zone one, the money piece, zone four, the back acts as zone one, right? Because when you pull this hair back, do you guys see this connects with the face framing? If you have this darkness right here, uh, just the brightness right here, especially if someone has layers, it's gonna be a huge disconnect. So you wanna connect the two together, right? So now we're gonna move on to zone four. Now this again acts as that money piece. And it is so important to never forget about this back section, right? A few foils make a huge difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a very thin slice. Okay, you, as you guys can see, she clearly has um, the most perfect hairline. Most people don't have a perfect hairline like this, okay? So what I would be doing on a regular person is, normally I take a diagonal back section because almost no one has a hairline that is like triangular like this. Right, but she does. So for those that do, because sometimes they do, I'm actually gonna take this a little bit thinner. For those that do, you're gonna wanna take a foil this way and then a foil this way. Again, a lot of people have baby hairs, they have breakage. Sometimes actually lightening that breakage can add more attention to it. So what you're gonna do is, again, you're gonna go against the grain of the hair. She doesn't obviously have any baby hairs in the back here, but you're gonna go against the grain of the hair, push that hair out, and the short pieces will fall out, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pivot her because now heads are a little bit difficult to work on sometimes, but we got this. Okay. And normally I ask my client to look down and then to the opposite, put their head the opposite direction of where I'm foiling because that way I can actually use their neck as a um, board. But doll head is a little bit different because I can ask her to do that. So I'm gonna try to get as close as possible, but in real life, this would be a little bit different because it would be kind of on her neck. Okay, so again, brightening it up. And you guys, even if you are not doing a money piece, right? If you're just doing a full head of highlights, make sure that you do zone four. For example, if you're just doing like a picking up a partial, make sure that you go in and do zone four. A few highlights in the back will make a huge difference, right? Having integrity in our work in general makes a huge difference. I don't know about you, but if I didn't do highlights in the back of my clients here, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Why? Because we know that they can't see it, but other people can see the back of their hair, right? And they wear their hair up. And that is a very important area to have some brightness if they have brightness throughout the hair, right? So if you're doing a pick me up, a partial, literally do two hi highlights in the back and it will make all the difference in the world for one, it connecting to zone one, that money piece, but two, creating that brightness in the back so there's not only darkness and depth back there, okay? And on a normal person, just keep in mind, this would be more of a thinner baby light section versus someone like her that has a perfect hairline and the perfect hair and super thick, <laughs> all right? Now the last foil, 
is now what we're going to do is we're going to take a diagonal back. And depending on the client's depth, if, I mean, sorry, depending on the client's density, if their hair is really thick, then you should do two foils back to back, diagonal back, diagonal back. It's up to you. You can either do a bold light. So let's go ahead and do that, actually. We'll pretend that our hair is really thick. We're going to do a bold light. Why am I doing that? For someone especially that doesn't have a lot of brightness going around, I still want their brightness to be connected to the back. I don't want this to kind of blend in, right? If we just did like baby lights or regular highlights on her, this could kind of blend in if her hair is really thick, right, with the front. We want this to really show still that there's brightness so the zone one, the money piece can all connect. So we're going to go ahead and tease this one time. And when I'm applying my lightener, I'm going to be applying in a diagonal formation. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be applying almost like a shadow root, but the opposite of a shadow root, right? So with our shadow root, we'd be applying diagonal and a little bit lower towards the mid back center. So with our highlight, our lighter, we're going to be applying a little bit higher towards the sides and then a little bit lower towards the mid center. So pretending we have a shadow root here, and then we have that brightness with our highlights. Just going with the shape of the head is gonna really make a huge difference in her blend, you guys. Just think about it. How is her hair gonna look when it lays naturally, right? The way you apply color is the way it's gonna look, the way it's gonna be. So think about it that way. Don't be so robotic with like, hi, I just got a foil, I got a foil. Think about the placement and how it's gonna naturally fall, right? So now the last one, we did a bold light. So now we're gonna be taking another diagonal back section. But this time we're gonna make it a little bit softer. And we're gonna do a regular highlight. And we're gonna blend it two times. Again, why are we blending it two times? Because, because we want it to have a nice, softer, natural lay. And again, this is my go-to for how I like to apply my money piece, my hero piece, but it, I obviously make it a little bit different and adjust it to every client in a different way, depending on their density, their, um, their hair in general, and what the client wants, what brightness they, they want around the face, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, I would be doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. So what I do on one side, I do on the opposite side. All right, again, I don't ask the client, how do they like to part the hair? I do exactly in the middle every time because for me, it's all about balance, making sure that it's balanced and how do you do that? By doing one thing on one side and doing the opposite on the other side. All right, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this quick, simple technique that you can utilize behind the chair every single day uh, with my soft and blended face framing method, my hero piece method. Um, if you guys have, again, any questions, please contact me on my Instagram, Larissa Doll. You can also contact Joyco on their Instagram or behind the chair. Uh, this is gonna be safe, so you guys can actually go back and rewatch the whole video. But I hope you guys enjoyed this technique on a beautiful, gloomy Monday here in LA. I love you all so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.